are going to be doing here is an actual social experiment. You are all, as you know, grad students at Marquette University and you're going to be assuming these mock identities. For those of you not familiar with the territory, you're going to be entering a lower socioeconomic strata. You're going to be working full-time jobs at seven to eight dollars an hour. Some of you will also be single parents of one child. But you'll still be students. You're going to be students hoping like crazy to work your way out of this cycle of poverty that has been the cycle that your neighbors, your relatives, your ancestors have been in for a very, very long time. You're going to be allowed to have one major significant other in your life. That's somebody that can help you in your time of need. That doesn't mean you don't have friends. You have friends, you have relatives, but they're not necessarily there for you when you need it, which is the way things are in the real world. However, I've got to warn you, the significant other is not going to be Bill Gates. You are going to pick a significant other you would be likely to have. That's someone in your own social economic strata. Your first assignment is going to be your most difficult. You're going to have to rent an apartment. You're going to have to rent an apartment using your net income. You're going to have to actually document this. You're going to have to go to the want ads or any other sort of services that you can go to where you can learn about apartments. You must document that you've actually telephoned these landlords and asked them the critical questions. For example, if you're a parent, you've got to ask them, are children allowed? Technically, legally, they should be. Some of you are going to draw from this basket of life chances and you're going to find out you've got a couple of dogs. That's going to limit your life chances for sure. Only a couple of you are going to have that issue. But you're going to have to ask these questions. You're going to have to say, I make such and such amount of money. Is this going to work? You may not have to say, I'll give the, all that information. But you're going to have to give enough information to know that you can rent this particular apartment. About once a month, you're going to be hit, like you would be in the real world, with an un planned situation. We all get these all the time. Something happens. It can be a good thing or a bad thing, but it's an unplanned situation. For some of you, the unplanned situations you're going to draw out of this basket of life chances might be positive. You might find out your bosses really love your work and you're going to end up getting all of, you know, some sort of raise or benefit or something. But it can also be a negative thing. You might find out something, you know, negative that isn't too terrible, like, you know, there's another 15, per, 15 cent raise in the gas prices. Or it could be that you lost your significant other or you might have even actually lost your job. So for some of you, you might find that you're not going to be able to stay in housing for various reasons that'll happen during the course of this semester. 
for those of you who find out you cannot any longer afford to pay your rent, you're going to have to make alternative decisions. You're going to have to figure out what you're going to do temporarily, we hope. Are you going to have to go into a homeless shelter? Are you going to have to find some other way of surviving on the streets? You're going to have to work your way and you're going to have to figure out how you're going to survive on the streets and more so how you're going to get off the streets in the long run. I'm a single parent of a four-year-old child and we live alone. I've been a telemarketer since I was in high school. Right now I work for a supper time marketing, a Milwaukee-based company that sells bur burial plots for a number of Washington County cemeteries. This experience has really helped me to understand needs of our older adults and I hope to use my master's in public service to work in policy for seniors. My name is Alex. I am a single person living alone. I am a backup mover working for heavyweight champions in Milwaukee. I am the truck driver and I also do some of the moving when they need to add another person. I've been in moving all my life and have no experience with anything else. I'm Melissa and I'm a single parent of a four-year-old child and we live alone. I have two years experience working as a case manager in a program for youth on Milwaukee's south side. The program called Crime Diversion takes youth who have been cited for non-felony offenses and allows them to work off their fines doing community service. This is a very small program and cannot afford to pay people very well, but does a lot of good work. Okay, my name is Sam and I'm a single parent with a four-year-old child. We live alone. I do cleaning for merry maids. I carry around cleaning supplies and a vacuum cleaner to clean houses, mainly in Cudahy, St. Francis, and Franklin. The firm I've been with is good to me and I've been there for six years. The only experience I have is childcare. My name is Tori and I'm a stand-up comedian working for a local musician that does gigs in senior centers and nursing homes. I do gigs in Milwaukee and Waukesha counties. I do grandma jokes that pit good-natured fun at the aging process, but the set usually ends up with some cracks at the younger generation. I'm Larry. I am a single person living alone. I have always been a store clerk. Now I work a 9-to-5 job in a lingerie store on Wisconsin Avenue. I really hate this job and I don't get the impression my employer is fond of me either. My bachelor's degree was in peace studies at UWM. This experience in this lingerie shop has made me realize how far the women's movement has not come. Hence, I hope to eventually use my public service degree to work on feminist issues. Not sure what yet. I'm a single person living alone. I had no work history until the current job. I work for the Merry Little Maids cleaning service in Milwaukee. I work first shift. They provide me with all my equipment, such as cleaning supplies and a vacuum cleaner. And I take the equipment to homes from Fox Point to Franklin and do the cleaning. My current job is for the Tone and Tanning Salon in Milwaukee. They send me out to people all over the county and sometimes beyond to help them with their training programs. I love my job. I'm a single person living alone. I work in the Tiny Tots Daycare Center. I really love the work except the pay is awful and there are no benefits. I'm an usher at a downtown Milwaukee theater. I work second shift, 40 hours, four days a week. I work for an animal shelter called Cats Are Us. I bring home abandoned and sick cats and kittens and nurture them until they adopt it. I have been in home health care since I began working. Right now I work for Home Health Associates in Wauwatosa. I work the day shift. I work for a resume service called Career Builders on Wisconsin Avenue. People bring me their work experience and I develop resumes for them. Although the small firm does not offer benefits, at least I will be able to afford the purchase to purchase my own. I have a job that I thought would be meaningful. I do AIDS testing at homeless shelters. I work as a greeter in a restaurant in Brown Deer, first shift. The work is easy, but the pay is awful and there are no benefits. I was in Job Corps right after high school where I was trained in the hospitality industry, like being a greeter here. I drive a flower truck for All in Bloom in Fox Point. My work averages, my work averages about 40 hours a week in this first shift. two weeks, the students shopped for apartments in the Milwaukee area. These were graduate students at a competitive university who took the assignment seriously. One by one, they sought living arrangements within their budgets and within the constraints of their mock identities. I went and looked at the apartment and uh, it was in a very bad neighborhood, so it made me feel really, really bad. And um, there was actually a prostitute downstairs. 
asking men weird things. And, um, but that was the best that I could find. Uh, and actually the landlord told me that they would need a $300 deposit and um, I agreed. And the, the apartment is in good shape, but the neighborhood is still pretty rough. So that made me feel really, really awkward. But I think that as of right now, that's the best that I can do. In Lovers Lane, where I'm living, it's just the bus goes all over the place from there. So, so you plan on using bus transportation yeah. primarily? Yeah. yeah. Plus, because I, I picked a spot right near where I work, it's a 20 minute walk. Mm -hmm. So I just drove around the inner city and tried to find signs that say for rent in Spanish <laughs> and called them up and said, I'll give you cash and kind of play the sad story. I'm a full time student, I'll be a good person, I won't bring in any bad boyfriends. Um, and as long as they didn't ask too many questions, that's how it worked out. So it was actually, it was okay for me to get an apartment. Yeah, same as I, I had to go to the roadside picking up numbers because I wanted to go as cheap as possible. And just like I figured, like, if they don't have money to advertise in the papers, it'd probably be cheaper. The areas that you could live that would accommodate your total budget were in areas that I thought were extremely questionable and you know being a single female not necessarily areas that I want to live in and in fact when I went to look at my apartment building there was a group of individuals congregating the, congregating in the hallway which made me really nervous and, and a bit uneasy about walking into the into the place but you know you sort of do what you can with the means that you have I broke I got it down through their small networks, the students also learned of social services, soup kitchens, and food pantries they could access that would help them with their basic necessities. They shared these resources when they met in their networks. The students kept journals of their mock identities, including their budgets and their personal feelings. In many ways, the students were becoming their mock identities. Their journals reflected fears of losing housing, and some even visited places where homeless slept to get a feel for their world. The most astute students realized quickly that they were eligible for income tax refunds from their full-time employment the year before. They shared this with others in their network. The average refund was $1,100, which helped them immeasurably. By March, the students were picking life chances from the basket. Half of these were positive and half negative. I'm trying to pay back whatever I can when I can, and my strategy right now is just to save things in the bank and kind of have a safety net of money in case something should go wrong, um, to keep in mind tuition for the fall as well. And right now I've been able to save about $450, but who knows um, how long that will go. And right now, with my life chances, I'm I'm pretty I'm okay. With um, with the tax returns, I think we all you know have a fairly decent return that should be coming up, which will be really helpful to add that extra and maybe put aside some for tuition next semester also. So, I actually had uh, two really good life-changing experiences this month. Um, when I drew from the basket, I actually got. Um, I won a prize of $300 of tuition for next semester, so that was great. I am currently paying about $80 per month on, um, on my tuition. And uh, so what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to have that, um, that money placed for this semester instead of next semester, because right now I need it a lot. I've had um, I have two life chances coming, and I've had one so far that um, I gave away my furniture when I moved, um, and I'm still living in the same place, I've only moved once, um, but I gave away my furniture so I wouldn't have moving costs, but my life chance now is that because I don't have any soft furniture and I'm sitting on hard furniture, I now have had some medical conditions that have arisen and I have to pay $350 to get those treated. Um, so. That's been challenging to come up with that money. I've taken on some tutoring gigs in the evening, but that's only amounted to like $50 a month, so it's not really enough to carry over. I had to take a whole week off work, so my budget was cut by a quarter. So I've opted to not pay Marquette for right now and um, worry about it next time and talk to financial aid. But if I do have to pay my tuition, then I'm going to be homeless very soon. How long 
By the end of March, a group of students decided to visit a homeless day center called Repairers of the Breach and learn of the services that they provided. Here they also heard the stories of people who actually had become homeless. A uh, brother of mine got murdered, sister got raped, uh, my mom passed away, my dad was in a house fire while I was in prison, and uh, I had to deal with all of that. But today, I'm a strong person behind all that because God has taught me to be strong. But I went through a lot of trials and tribulations in my life. And, and due to all of that, one day uh, I had to go to the mental health complex due to the fact is that I was having uh, psychological issues. And um, so I ended up going there to get some medication. So from that point on, a lady came to me and she said, well, Herman, have you ever heard of the repairs of the breach? And I said, what's that? And she said, well, it's a place that you can get help. So from that day on, uh, I've been here. And I was staying in a warehouse there, and it was really cold, and we didn't have any um, way to take a bath. And I had gone like five days without taking a bath. And this, this guy that I met told me, well, there's this place that you can go, and you have to sign in when you're there, and uh, you can take a shower and get some clothes, because I had left everything behind when I came to Milwaukee because I was on a self-destructive mode. I didn't want to be anywhere anymore. I really didn't care about myself anymore. And uh, So we came to Repairs of the Breach, and I, I signed in under the name Sally. I was so devastated that of the stigma of being homeless that the first thing I did was I went to Walgreens and I took a book bag and I stole deodorant, toothpaste, and all the personal hygiene items I thought I would need while living on the street. And when I went back to the shelter, um, it was called the overflow. Then you had to leave at like five in the morning and you could go back at five at night. And uh, I told a girl what I did because I felt so bad. And she told me that I didn't have to go in the stores and steal, that she would take me to a place where they would give you a change of clothes and personal hygiene items. And that was my first time 10 years ago at Repairs of the Breach. I'll always be an addict, but I won't forget where I came from. And I know one was in too many, a thousand is too much. So I know today that I am somebody, I'm not homeless anymore, but I still come back and help with the homeless people here. And I did all this and got back on my feet. Now I'm with the Speaker's Bureau of the Repairs of the Breach, and I enjoy it, and I know that this is where God wanted me to be, you know. Wish I could lose. Life chances continued in April. Both of my life chances, I got a car, so I, um, I know I have two cars, um, and I can't sell my old junker, but um, so I, I have a car. But um, my last life chance, I sold a Christmas ornament that was sold for like um, $1,100. The one from my basket was that my ex gave me an additional child support payment this month, so I had an extra $150. Life change uh, that I had is my significant other broke her hip and now I have her lovely dog I have to uh, take care of, which at first I thought was really going to be a problem because it required a whole lot of uh, time during the week to take care of it. But because this winter has been really uh, good to me with the snow and part of my rent deal is that if I do the snow shoveling and maintenance around there, uh, they'll knock $50 off the rent. Uh, this uh, past week I checked out some insurance and I realized that I'm really going to go either at budget or just below, so um, right on the border of becoming uh, almost homeless. I had to move in with my brother, My uh, the apartment that I was living in. Uh, the furnace broke and so I didn't have any heat, so I had to move in with my brother. Um, I can only live with him until April 1st. Um, I'm sorry, I have to move out tomorrow actually, and then I'm living with a neighbor for till April 1st, and I gotta pay him a hundred bucks, and then I gotta find a new place to live. So. Um, I'm having a tough time finding health insurance and the price of gas is killing me. 
Well, my most recent life chance was pretty terrible, so I'm not sure how I'm going to get through the next week. Um, my fiance left me, and now I'm forced to pay my rent alone, and I have to figure out which bills I'm going to skip on. So. I may be needing some help from my network in the next few weeks because I really think I'm going to be homeless, or at least borderline homeless. Um, my life chance this past month was um, I had switched jobs originally from being a home care aide to working at McDonald's just so that hours were more flexible into my daughter's schedule. And um, I, my hours were cut from 40 hours a week to 32 because I didn't get along with people I worked with. So this month's budget is going to be a little shorter just because I have to just tighten it up a lot. If I don't get a better job, I think I'd, over the long term I would just end up going broke. By the middle of the month, two students had lost their housing and become homeless. They went through a mock intake at a homeless shelter called Hope House. Our men in emergency shelter can stay 30 to 60 days and our single women and families can stay for up to two years. Well, our guests are here. They each are assigned a case manager that works with them on setting different goals to hopefully help them not be homeless again in the future. Hi, Melissa. I'm Patty Abbott from Help House. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you had any trouble finding no. your way here? No, that's fine. I've got your, um, the Cathedral Center sent over your homeless letter. I see you're working with Ms. Doe. Mm -hmm. um, do you like her? Yeah, she's, yeah been. she's been around for a long time. Um, what I'm going to do now is ask you some questions to see if you uh, are a fit for our program here. I don't know how much Cathedral Center has told you about us. Yeah. Not a whole lot? No. Okay, so um, as you know, you, you have a child, right? Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. And how old is the child? Four. Four, okay. So what you would be looking for is a room on our family floor. We have ten rooms. Some are small, some are large. You would get one of the smaller rooms, obviously. You'd be provided with a dresser with a closet, uh, a mirror, bunk beds, or a bed and bunk beds. It just depends on what's in there. Okay. Um, for the child, if the child is still in a crib, we would provide you with a crib. I don't know she's if not, she's not in a crib anymore. Okay. okay. Are you getting any food stamps or any other governmental assistance? Food stamps and... Uh, Do you know how much? Uh, approximately 130. Okay. I'm surprised you haven't been homeless prior to this. You've done a pretty good job of managing your money up to now, it looks like. How long have you had the job? I've been on the job for two years. Two years, okay. You like the work there? I do. Okay. My goal is to eventually uh, get my master's degree and hopefully that'll boost me up in my job. What's your educational level right now? I have a BA right now. I started to have some problems with um, hearing some voices um, telling me not to leave my house. Okay. When did and, that start? Um, it started about the third week of March. Okay. And so, it's been very threatening. It sounds like it's scary. It's it's terrible, and I can't I can't leave. I can't go to work. I can't go to school. Well, I can't. You were able to come here. That's good. Yeah, Must my, have been my hard. sister has been really helpful in getting me out of the house for this because, you know, if someone says they're going to kill you, you don't want to leave your house. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. We require that you save seventy five percent of all your income, okay. no matter where it comes from. Um, so, if, like a family member sends you a check. That's, that needs to be given to the case manager. You would get to spend 25% on whatever you'd like, but we will then keep the rest of it either in a bank account that you set up or here in our safe. And once you have enough money saved up, we'll help you then get services to get into housing. And that money goes towards? We'll go towards your housing. Yeah, we don't collect a fee, we're free. Within weeks, three others lost their housing. In their mock identity, some opted to live in church basements or out in the open. They took advantage of the daytime services at repairs of the breach. The old spoil clothes that you do have, they go in the tub on the left side that you do not want. Towel goes in the tub on the right, so we can turn them in and get them back washed and clean for you guys to have for the next time. Seeing how easy it was for some of these very motivated students to become homeless brought me back full cycle. When homelessness first began to emerge as a national problem back in the 1980s, I had helped found Repairs of the Breach. The organization was founded on the principle that most people were only a few paychecks or a few people away from becoming homeless. 
And as a result of their brainstorming, they envisioned a movement. And that movement being a movement where the main voice would be homeless and formerly homeless people, but it would be a movement where there would be true solidarity with people with homes and stability and incomes. They would be in solidarity with the homeless people in that movement. By semester's end, five students were on the streets. 10 described themselves as being one month away from being on the streets, and 10 might make it through the summer. First of all, I want you to think about this. How many of you right now could survive loss of two paychecks and still be able to pay your rent and your bills? How many? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you are on track, given your budget right now, given no explosive situations, how many of you are on track right now to pay your full tuition in the fall at Marquette? Oh, we're really an upwardly mobile group, aren't we? <laughs> OK. We're really going to break the cycle of poverty here, aren't we? All right, how many of you are on track to pay tuition anywhere come fall? Good. How many of you could survive, given your budget right now and given no calamities, how many of you could survive another three months like this and be absolutely certain you can pay your rent and your monthly bills? All right, that's a share of you could, could actually do that. The students closed out the semester with presentations on their experiences. At the beginning of the semester, you know, we all started off with similar situations, and it was just very apparent very quickly how one or two um, positive or negative life chances could um, really impact a person's life who's living on or near the poverty line. Um, you know, making it apparent that there is a thin line between just making it and becoming homeless. And uh, participating in this experience really forced me to place myself in the shoes of someone else. Um, and although, as I said, my mock identity didn't become homeless and is seemingly in an okay position now, um, I, I struggled to pay her bills, um, to find education for her child, um, to file her service paperwork, to pay off her debts and what have you. And it just gave me a newfound respect for people who do this on a daily basis, especially someone who has to account for a child. Um, I myself don't have children, um, so I just you know, really uh, respect someone who is able to do this in their daily life. What is nice about it, 75% of the income, if you are working, you then have to put in a bank and save in order to stay in their facility. On the other side of this, you got repairs of the breach. And if you look at those over there, it's kind of in a economically downturned area. There is really nothing to one side of it. The corner is a vacant lot, which they turned into a little park area, put some mulch there. In the summer, they do the gardens. What's nice about them, 100% by donations. And by doing that, they don't ask any questions at the door. It does not matter who you are, what you are, what you do, what you wear, the door is always open. It allowed me to see a different side of a situation rather than, you know, we all come at something from our own background. And this allowed me to experience some things that I might not have experienced otherwise. And it also gave me a better respect for the challenges that a lot of people may face when faced with limitations, and in reality, a lot of the limitations we had were actually luxuries considering what other people may have. Cars have never been good to me. Um, they always break down with gas money, gas being nearly $4 a gallon. Uh, at $7 an hour when you're earning a wage after taxes, you're basically working an hour just to pay for a gallon of gasoline, and a gallon of gasoline isn't going to take you very far. So I wanted to reduce my costs as much as I could to try to survive during this, during this short period of time when I was still in, in college before I could graduate. One of the things that I was really, really stressed out about when I was doing this experiment is that in my real job, I was actually thinking, constantly thinking about my identity, 
my Mac identity. Every day I would wake up and I would say, oh my God, what am I gonna do for this service? Or what am I gonna do with, you know, with my food? What am I gonna eat? And, and it was just confusing for me at times because I knew I had to write these papers and um, it was just different. Like I would wake up every day and it's kind of like I had two identities. This Life Chance stated that despite being in a 12-step program successfully for the last three years, I've been experiencing just too much stress. I convinced myself a few beers here and there would be just fine, you know, help me get through the times. Unfortunately, the few beers here and there turned into a 12-pack a day. And I just didn't go into work. I went on a big binge drinking spree, and I stayed home without calling my boss, letting him know what was happening. A coworker happened to witness me out on this binge and tattled on me, basically. So when I did finally return to work, I was fired on the spot. No questions asked. I couldn't receive any benefits because I had been caught on this binge as to why I was not at work. Fortunately, I convinced myself that I needed some supervision in order to get better and get over this condition. So I decided that I would leave my apartment and use a shelter that could help me with substance abuse counseling. And so you have to answer all their questions. So you just gotta be compliant. And you have to also, they also told me what their program was about and what was all involved and what is expected of me. So just doing this experiment is something that I really think everybody should do. I mean, to get them aware of homelessness. Personally, um, in my real self for this experiment, it was very helpful in a lot of respects. I didn't grow up in a regular domestic neighborhood, so I had no concept of social services or how you even get help if you're in that type of situation. Living on a, a budget that's pretty stringent myself, uh, being a student for a very long time, uh, it wasn't that difficult to budget these expenses and to be creative with the different resources that you have to utilize when you don't have money to spend, so you find things to do for free. So all in all, it was a, a good experience to be able to investigate what a person at this level would have to do to be creative to work with, but at the same time, I was also blessed that I didn't have any horrible things that got thrown at me. It did hit me hard when I heard through email that some of our uh, classmates did become homeless. Um, it made me realize that even though I was lucky enough to get life chances that were um, very beneficial to myself, that doesn't happen to everyone out there. So um, I did take the homelessness of other people very hard. So the problem is though, at the end of this month, I'm about $94 in the hole. And even if I put it on my credit card, next month I will be homeless. So you might be wondering, things were looking pretty good, how did this happen? Um, I chalk it up to my own ignorance. Let me explain. Um, it was a basic ignorance to services, ignorance to basic money-saving strategies, pretty much based on how I was raised in my real life, um, and just complete things that I never thought of. You know, I never thought to seek out services from a church, because I don't go to church. I, that was the last thing that crossed my mind. I wouldn't have even thought to do that. Um, all the student loan stuff, I, in my real life, don't have student loans. I don't deal with that stuff. I wouldn't have even thought to go and, you know, mess with that stuff to change it. Um, the tax reimbursement thing. I would have never thought to do that either because my dad files my taxes for me and you know I make eight bucks an hour now and I owed this year so I had no reason to think that I was going to get anything back. Um, so it was just a basic wow there's a whole lot about the world I don't know a thing about with this, with this whole project that was kind of um, upsetting I guess. Um, so really what I've gotten out of this whole experience is a newfound respect for people who live in poverty and don't you know end up homeless after four months because they've obviously found a way to make it work and yeah you can be at, pov in, at the poverty line and you can stay there for a long time but they're staying there you know they're managing to make it work. Mental disorders can prevent people from carrying out essential aspects of daily life such as self-care, household management and interpersonal relationships and that's something that as soon as I got this life chance, I was very much aware that I wouldn't be able to file taxes. I wouldn't be able to go grocery shopping. I wouldn't be able to do any of this because I heard these voices and they told me, you know, not to leave, so I didn't leave. Um, so I wasn't able to carry on any normal activities for me or for my daughter. Some issues I've looked at as a single parent, uh, what do you do when you have a sick child? What happens when you get sick yourself? Um, there's days off of school, especially this winter with snow days teachers in service and school vacation. Uh, very fortunate that I've had resources to assist with uh, Nathaniel's care. 
But what this experiment made me realize is that we are really only a paycheck away from being homeless, all of us, and it could happen to any one of us for any number of reasons. You know, I'm lucky enough to be in a situation where that's not likely going to happen, but it could. I got stressed out sometimes with that, just trying to budget everything and trying to figure out what I needed and what I didn't need and what I could do without. Um, I gave up my car. I still gave up my car for this month. Um, to, for a bus pass, I figure, you know, it was like $20 a month, I believe. And, and found out that I was available for food share, as well as Badger Care for my health services, home energy assistance, and WIC. With food share, I did apply. And after a month, I was able to receive some services. And along with the money that they gave me, I made use of another service on 55th in Silver Spring called Growing Power. And Growing Power allowed me to get a box of fruit and vegetables, only $13 a week. The fact of standing in line, waiting, appointments, and I don't know why social programs make you have appointments in the middle of the day, or you have appointments where you have to wait for two hours, um, and all the forms you have to fill out. And that's just really disheartening to sit there. And I mean, you, you feel like a cow in a line just waiting for the slaughter. For some, experiencing the world of those at risk for homelessness changed their outlook and their practices. When I became a cop, I knew that finances were not necessarily going to be that big of a concern for me. Um, being, unless I really screwed up, I wasn't going to lose my job. I've got a retirement system. I've got um, uh, health care. I've got dental care. I've got um, all these things that I can sort of lean on with my, with my work. And I came into um, this job pretty naive about homelessness and, and poverty and thinking that most homeless people wanted to be that way. We had just received one of those little garbage, uh, little um, grocery bags from the Boy Scouts asking to put money in it for um, food pantries. I normally throw those away or use them for garbage. This month I actually put food in it for other people. I never saw that side of the story where, you know, a single person with a bachelor's degree in this type of situation. So I think I'm pretty glad that I went through this. And, uh, and again, I hope that in the future I can uh, volunteer my time more to help people that go through these situations. Uh, in real life, I now have more appreciation of single parents, uh, sticking to budgets. I've made donations to food pantries as a result of this, doing some research, volunteer work with my church, and I've learned about some of my church resources um, and where some of my tax dollars go for these programs. Trouble in mind, I'm blue. And I won't be blue always. Cause the sun gonna shine in my bad door someday. I'm all alone at midnight. street lamp flickering is low never had so much trouble in all my life before oh trouble in mind i'm blue trouble on my worried mind now when you see to keep from crying.